All right, so in the next few videos, we're going to look at function arithmetic. Uh, so this is just the various ways that you can combine old functions to get new functions, okay? Um, so basic operations are addition and subtraction, okay? And they're defined exactly the way you think they should be defined. Uh, so if I have two functions, f and g, and I want to add them together, well, as usual in calculus, if we want to specify a function, we just have to tell you what it does with a given input. So f plus g is the function that if you give it an input x, it's going to calculate f of x. It's going to calculate g of x and then it's going to add them together. Simple enough, right? And subtraction, it's the exact same story, right? If I wanted to do f minus g, I do f of x minus g of x, okay? So that's pretty simple. So for example, if, uh, if f of x was something like the square root of x, and g of x is something like 1 over x minus 2. And I want to calculate f plus g. Well, it's just f of x plus g of x. So it's root x plus 1 over x minus 2. Simple enough, right? Uh, one thing that you should probably watch out for when you're doing these is there is, there is a domain issue to be aware of, right? Um, so the domain of f plus g, well, in order for the right-hand side to be defined, right, root x has to be defined, 1 over x minus 2 has to be defined, or in general, right? Um, to define the left-hand side, you need to be able to define the right-hand side. The right-hand side is the sum or difference of two numbers. So both of those numbers have to be defined. So that means that x has to be in the domain of f, and it has to be in the domain of g, right? It has to belong to the domain of both. Uh, that means that we need to take the original domains and intersect them. Okay, so for the example that we have on the go here, um, we know that f of x has domain zero to infinity, g has domain, well, everything but two, right? So minus infinity to 2, union 2 to infinity. Um, so if we intersect those two domains, what happens is, well, we basically have to remove 2 from the domain of f, right? So f plus g is going to be defined if x is bigger than or equal to 0, but not equal to 2. So the domain for f plus g will be from 0 to 2, and from 2 to infinity, okay? All right, so that's simple enough. Uh, from here, you could move on to looking at multiplication. Okay. So multiplication, you define more or less the way you think you should, right? Um, the product, fg, evaluated at x, is just the product, f of x times g of x, okay? And, and the same domain rule applies here. 
as, as we head for addition, and, and of course this would also apply for subtraction, right? I want to multiply these two numbers, so I have to make sure that f and g are both defined. Fair enough. Um, so if we were going to do uh, our example here, if I did f times g at x, well, I'm going to take this, I'm going to multiply by root x. Probably we'd combine that as a single fraction and write it like so. Okay? And you'll notice there's the same domain issue that you had before. Okay. Uh, the last one is division of these basic operations. And as you might expect, f over g evaluated at x is just going to be f of x divided by g of x. Um, but here we also, there's an additional domain restriction. Of course, you can't divide by 0. So g of x needs to be non-zero, okay? All right, um, so if we, maybe this function g of x, you know, this, we could think of this as having come from the constant function one and the linear function x minus two, right? Both of those have domain all real numbers, but when I divide those two functions, the one in the denominator has a zero, and so that zero needs to be removed from the domain, right? So two is not part of the domain. Um, curiously enough, um, this is an interesting one. If I, uh, if I use our example here, and this is probably a good thing to mention, uh, in the case where f of x is root x and g of x is 1 over, over x minus 2, so if you do f over g at x, so that's root x divide by 1 over x minus 2, all right? And when we divide, we multiply by the reciprocal, so we get root x times x minus 2. You might be tempted in this case to say that the domain uh, now includes 2. The domain is just 0 to infinity because you're multiplying by x minus 2 instead of dividing by x minus 2. Um, that's not the case, however, even though this this simplified form here is defined when x equals 2. The way we arrived at this was we started with this function g of x and we divided by it, right? And g of x is undefined when x is equal to 2, right? So even though the final expression does appear to be defined at 2, if we are arriving at it through this division process, well, you can't divide by a number that's undefined, okay? Um, so the domain there would still, um, would still be the same domain that we encountered for addition or subtraction or multiplication.